Hello class, Engineer CK here and I'm about to discuss to you the subject Analytic Geometry. Analytic Geometry deals with geometric problems using coordinate system, thereby converting it into algebraic problems. The Analytic Geometry is founded by René Descartes in which uh, the coordinate system is introduced in the year 1637. A rectangular coordinate system, which is also known as Cartesian coordinate system, we have here two axes, which is the x and y axis, which means that all values along the x coordinate or along the horizontal shall be measured. Uh, along the x-axis. For the uh, measurements along the vertical it shall be referred or or referred to the y-axis. Now, the points of intersection of the x and y-axis as our reference lines, this one is called the origin, wherein the origin we have the coordinates of zero value for the x coordinate and zero value for the y coordinate. Now, the, co the Cartesian coordinate or the Cartesian plane, which is this space, uh, will be divided into four parts by the x and y axis. These parts are called the Quadrants. We have the first quadrant here, upper right, the second quadrant at the upper left portion, and the third quadrant, lower left, fourth quadrant, lower right. Now, uh, for a coordinate of a point, for example, we have 5 and 3. Now, uh, to locate 5 and 3, the first coordinate or or the value 5 is the, the value for the x component of that point. So the x component of that point is what you call the abscissa. So it is measured from the origin along the x-axis, we have 5 counts. Now for the value 3, which is the y coordinate or the y component of that point, it will be measured along the vertical 1, 2, and 3. By the way, for the x-axis, going to the right is positive and going to the left from the origin is negative. For the y-axis, we have a positive value upward and negative value for uh, values along the, uh, no, below the origin. Now again, going back here, 5 and 3, we have 5 counts from the origin to the right for the x axis or the x value, x component or abscissa. For the ordinate or the y component of that point, which is 3, is 3 counts from the origin upward. So, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then 3 counts upward. So, this is the location of point P which has coordinate of 5 and 3. Next. So distance between two points. How to compute the distance of two points given the coordinates? So say we have here x1 and y1 for point number 1 and y x2, y2 for point 2. We are required to determine the nearest distance from these points, point 1 to point 2. So the solution for that is the distance formula. Distance formula is just derived from Pythagorean theorem, wherein D is the nearest distance from points 1 to 2, is the hypotenuse of, uh, of the right triangle that we, could we will form from the uh, x component and y component 
of the values or of that distance. So this x component and y component is just the difference between the, the x values for their coordinates as well as for the y component which is the difference of the y values for the coordinates. That's why we have x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. So by Pythagorean theorem, d squared is equal to this uh, x2 minus x1 square plus the quantity of y2 minus y1 square. So take the square root of both sides. This would be the formula. Okay. Next, distance between two points in space. So, since we are in space, uh, we have another axis that will be introduced, not just x and y axis. That would be the z axis, which means that in space, we are three-dimensional. So, in order for us to compute the nearest distance between two points in space, uh, it has similarity with the solution of the previous uh, slide wherein we use the distance formula using Pythagorean theorem. But here, uh, we just have to add another uh, component, the difference of the z values of those points for z for z2 minus z1. So, let's just have an additional okay, uh, uh, value, which is z2 minus z1, and take the square of that. So, therefore, d is equal to the square root of the quantity of x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square plus the quantity of z2 minus z1 square. Example. What is the distance between points 5, 4 and 7, uh, negative 3? So, the given R for x of 1, let's say this is point 1, this is point 2. x of 1 is 5, y1 is 4. x2 is 7, y2 is negative 3. To compute the nearest distance from these points, we will use a uh, distance formula equals to the square root of x1 minus x2, or you can interchange that x2 minus x1, as long as you are consistent of what comes first. So if we use x2, minus x1 square for the y component should be y2 minus y1 square. Substitute, it is equals to the square root of x2 is 7 minus x1 5 square plus y2 negative 3 minus y sub 1 4 square d is equals to the square root of 7 minus 5 is uh, negative 2 negative 2 square plus uh, negative 3 minus 4 negative 7 square so d is equals to the square root of 2 square is 4 plus 7 square negative 7 square is 49 d Therefore, is equals to the square root of 4 plus 49. It is equals to 53. So, the equivalent of square root of 53 is in decimal is 7.28 units. So, our final answer is 7.28. 280 units. That's your answer. Next. The distance between points 3 and unknown y and point 8 
7 is 13 which means that the distance between these two points is equal to 13 then y is equal to what using again the distance formula where x of 1 is 3 y is of 1 is y x of 2 is 8 y sub 2 is 7 this is the given the distance is equals to 13 the distance formula is equals to the square root of uh, x of 2 minus x of 1 square plus y sub 2 y sub 1 square substitute the given 13 square root of x2 8 x of 1 3 square plus 7 minus y square square both sides we will have 13 square and the square root will be eliminated so 8 what remains is 8 minus 3 square plus 7 minus y square 13 square is 13 square 169 and we have here 8 minus 3 5 so 5 square is 25 and 7 minus y so we take the square of 7 minus y we will have we have 7 square is 49 then the middle term 2 times 7 times negative y negative 14 y then negative y square plus y square uh, let's uh, rewrite 169 we transpose uh, 169 on the right hand side of the equation so that we will have a quadratic equation so 169 will become negative now uh, 0 is equals to y squared 25 plus 49 is 74 minus 169 uh, minus 14y 0 is equals to y squared minus 14y 74 minus 169 is negative 95 or it's also equal to a y square minus 14y minus 95 equals to 0 okay uh, using quadratic formula we have quadratic formula x1 x2 is equals to negative b squared plus or minus sorry that's negative b then plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a so we have a of 1 b is negative 14 and c is negative 95 so let's solve that so that we have the two values so here we have unknown y so sorry let's use y okay y1 and y2 now now let's solve that a is equals to 1 so that's a b and c and we have a formula for y1 y2 equals to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a c over 2 a substitute negative 14 negative of negative 14 is positive 14 
plus or minus the square root of b square again, negative 14 raised to 2 minus 4 times a 1 c negative 95 divided by 2 times 1. Substitute 14 plus or minus the square root of 14 square is 196 then we have negative 4 times negative 95 positive 380 all over 2 so 14 plus or minus the square root of 196 plus 380 576 all over 2 so the square root of 576 is equal to 24 so we have 14 plus or minus 24 over 2 so if it is positive we have 14 plus 24 Okay, 14 plus 24, 38 over 2. 38 over 2. Say so this is for y1. Then 38 divided by 2 is 19. Next, y is of 2. It is equals to 14 minus negative 10. Negative 10 divided by 2 equals to negative 5. So we have two values for y. Okay, We have 19 and negative 5. So going back to our problem, for y, either 19 or negative 5 will satisfy the answer unknown y so if we use that value for this y we both have this we both have a distance or the nearest distance between these points of 13 so this is correct this is correct next So here are the forms of equations of a line. The first one is the general equation where we write down as ax plus by plus c equals to zero, where a is the coefficient of x term, then b the coefficient of the term that has a y variable, and c as the constant. Number two, Point slope form. For the point slope form, this is essential in determining the slope of a line. If we have also a given point of a line and its slope, we can also determine the general equation using this form of equation, the point slope form. The third one, slope intercept form. The slope-intercept form is just y equals to mx plus b, where m is just the slope. Uh, this is just a simplified form of this point-slope form. When we try to simplify the equation, if we have two points given here in the point-slope form. Now, number four, given two points of a line, we can determine the general equation of a line using this 2.4 of equation of a line where y minus y sub 1 equals to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1 times x minus x sub 1. By the way, uh, this 2-point form is just similar to the point slope form. Because in determining the slope of a, line, of a line given two points, the formula is just y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So if, when you simplify the equation, you will go back to the point slope form 
and you will have the slope intercept form okay from here you can have that that and you will go back to gen general equation so uh, it depends on the required on a particular problem on what uh, what solution or what form of equation you will use uh, just like here in the fifth form of an equation in forming the equation of a line uh, we have here the intercept form where x over a plus y over b equals to 1 so here uh, a and b are the x intercept and y intercept of the line the x intercept and the y intercept is the value from the origin in which the line intersects either x or the y axis so if it intersects the x axis the horizontal distance from the origin is the x intercept while the y intercept is the vertical distance in which the line intersect the y axis so in forming your equation to intercept form it will be useful in determining the x and y intercept example find the equation of the line having a slope of 2 passing through point negative 4 3 so the given are slope m2 and the coordinate of the point x equals to negative 4 x1 let's say x1 and y1 uh, 3 so uh, what form of equation we can use so that we are able to determine the general equation of the line so the best uh, form of equation that we will use here since we have a given a slope and a coordinate of a point the best uh, solution is we use point slope form so using point slope form we have here y minus y1 equals to m the slope times the quantity of x minus x1 substitute y uh, y minus 3 y minus 3 m is 2 x minus negative 4 okay negative 4 okay uh, y minus 3 equals to 2 times uh, x 2 x uh, this is negative negative positive so positive 4 times 2 is positive 8 so rewrite the equation uh, we have here transpose 2x we have negative 2x plus y minus 3 uh, times or subtract 8 by transposing 8 to the left hand side of our equation so 2x plus y minus 11 equals to 0 the uh, this is correct but uh, we can also write our equation by multiplying both sides by negative 1 so that the the sign of the term that has an x variable should be positive so if we multiply both sides by negative 1, we will have 2x minus y plus 11 equals to 0. That's your equation. Also, this is correct. That negative 2x plus y minus 11 equals to 0. That's also correct for the equation of the line. Next. Find the slope of a line having an equation of 2x minus y plus 5 equals to 0 and we have also uh, 9x minus 4y minus 24 
So let's determine the slope. To determine the slope, we just simply change this given general equation of the line into the point slope 4. Now for number 1, it is 2x minus y plus 5 is equals to 0. So the point slope form is equals to y mx plus b. So negative y is equals to negative 2x, then transpose positive 5 will be negative 5. Multiply both sides by negative 1 in order for us to have a positive y on the left hand side of the equation. So y is equals to positive 2x plus 5. Therefore, the slope is 2. Number 2, 9x minus 4y minus 24 is equals to 0. Minus 4y is equals to 9x comes now negative 9x negative 24 becomes positive 24. So, we will divide both sides by negative 4. Then, cancel. Y is equals to if we have a common denominator of negative 4 from this uh, expression, we can distribute that denominator. Okay? Plus 24 over negative 4. So, y, negative, negative, positive. So, 9 over 4, x, positive numerator, negative denominator, we have a negative. Negative 6. So, the slope for number 2 is 9 over 4, or in decimal, it is 2.25. Next, find the equation of a line passing through points negative 5, 3, and 4, 2. So we have uh, two points here given their coordinates. So the solution for us to determine the equation of the line is with the use of the two point. Uh, two point slope form two point form rather so the two point form is y minus twice one equals to y two y one over x two minus x one times x minus x one so we will just substitute the given here. This is x of 1, y is of 1. This is x of 2, y is of 2. Substitute y minus 2 equals to, sorry, it's y minus 3 equals to 2 minus 3 over x of 2, 4, minus negative 5, okay, times x minus negative 5, again. So, let's evaluate. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 4 plus 5 is 9. So, we have negative 1 over 9. x plus 5. Just multiply both sides by 9 to eliminate the denominator here. Which is 9. 9. 9. So, 9y minus 27 is equals to, listen out, on the right hand side of the equation, just copy x plus 5 because 9 is cancelled. 
Now, the equation will be, continue here, uh, we will transpose x since we are going to determine the general equation of the line. Okay. Uh, the two-point form equation is just the tool for us to determine the general equation. So, if I transpose x on the right and the left hand side of the equation, we have negative x plus 9y minus 27 and positive 5 going to the left side of the equation, negative 5 na siya, equals to 0. So, negative x plus 9y minus 32 is equals to 0. Multiply the equation by negative 1 so that we have a positive x here. It will be x minus 9y plus 32 plus to 0. So I multiply negative 1 on this equation. But this equation is also correct, okay? That's also correct since the, the value of this equation is just equal to this. So that's your answer. Next, let I mean the x and y intercept of the equation for x minus 3y plus 5 equals to 0. So given the general equation of the line, uh, in order for us to determine the x and y intercept, we should change this equation into intercept form. So, the intercept form is x over a plus y over b should be equals to 1. So, we have for x minus 3y plus 5 is equals to 0. Now, we will transpose the constant positive 5 to the right hand side of the equation. We will have negative 5 here. Then, for us to have a positive 1 on the right hand side of the equation, we will divide both sides by negative 5. After that, we have 4x over negative 5 uh, minus 3y over negative 5. Now, it is equals to 1. Now, actually, we can apply the signs here for the numerator and denominator so that this would be positive. Okay, because like well, positive numerator, negative denominator, the the sign will be changed to positive. Now, uh, since our equation here in the intercept form for each term, x over a and y over b, there term for the numerator has no coefficient or the coefficient is just 1. So, in order for us to change this form, which is 4x over negative 5 and 3y over 5, as we recall some properties in fractions where if a denominator has a, a fraction Let's say this one, 1 over 1 over a. So say here, a fraction where the denominator has a fractional value also, uh, we can translate that into a over 1. The same way, uh, we will just reverse that solution here in this problem where we will put the numerator here to the denominator of the denominator of that term. So, x over negative 5 over 4. That's the equivalent value for that. And y over 5 over 3 equals to 1. So, we already have our uh, intercept form of the equation of the line. So, our a here is negative 5 over 4, b is 5 over 3. 
So the x-intercept therefore is A. This is the x-intercept. And this is the y-intercept. You can also express that into decimal value. Okay. When you divide 5 by 4, 5 divided by 3. That's both correct. Next. For the slope of a line, we have formula of y sub 2 minus y sub 1 of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 as I mentioned earlier for the formula for the slope. Since the slope is equivalent to tangent theta or the angle of inclination of the line, uh, we can determine that angle by applying tangent function. For parallel lines, if we have separate or different equations of line, we can only prove that these uh, lines are parallel by comparing their slopes. So their slope should be equal. For perpendicular lines, the slope of a line should be negative reciprocal to the slope of the other line in order for us to have a perpendicular uh, lines. Example, find the slope of the line segment joining negative 2, 4, and 5, negative 3. So, we are also required to determine the inclination of the line. Now, m is equals to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So, we define the slope as the rise over run because the rise is just the vertical component of a slope, okay, and run is the horizontal component. So, here we just subtract the y components or y values for the coordinates. So, this is y1, y sub 1, y sub 2, x sub 1, x sub 2, if we were going to assign that. Substitute uh, y sub 2 is negative 3 minus 4 over x sub 2, 5 minus negative 2. So, we will have negative 7 over uh, positive 7. Therefore, the slope is... negative 1. Okay? Slope is negative 1. For the inclination of the line, we have tangent theta is equal to the slope. So, theta is equal to arc tangent of m. Arc tangent of negative 1. Solve that in our calculators. It's equal to uh, tangent negative 1 is negative 45 negative 45 degrees okay so that's how you solve the slope and the inclination another example prove that these lines are parallel having equations of 4x minus 9y minus 18 equals to 0 and 8x minus 18y plus 11 equals to 0. So actually, there, there are other solutions in determining the slope of a line. We can differentiate the equation. But here, uh, I will just teach you in just uh, using the, the point slope form in determining the slope. So here for the first equation, 4x minus 9y minus 18 to 0. Negative 9y is equals to transpose 4x negative 4x plus 18 divide both sides by negative 9 we will have y equals to negative negative positive 4 over 9x 
Then, positive, negative, negative 2. The slope here on the first equation is 4 over 9. Let's prove that the second equation has the same slope. So, 8x minus 18y plus 11 is equal to 0. So, negative 18y equals to negative 8x, then minus 11. Find both sides by negative 18. Y, therefore, is equals to negative 8x over negative 18. Uh, negative, negative also. So, negative, uh, we'll have also positive 11 over 18. So, this is negative and negative. So, the negative sign will be cancelled or they become positive. So, uh, they are both divisible, uh, factorable by 2. So, factor out 2, what remains is 4. This one divided by 2 and 9. So, positive 4 over 9, x plus 11 over 18. Therefore, the slope here on the second equation is 4 over 9. Okay. The slope of the first equation is equal to the second equation. Therefore, they are parallel. Correct. The line 2x minus 3y plus 2 equals to 0 is perpendicular to another line n1 of unknown equation. Find the slope of n1. So, the let's say the slope of the second line which is L1 to determine that we have uh, we should equate the determined slope of this given line and take the negative reciprocal of that so that's why if we have 2x minus 3y plus 2 equals to 0 negative 3y equals to negative 2x minus 2 divide both sides by negative 3 uh, continue here y is equals to negative 2x over negative 3 negative uh, negative 2 over negative 3 we will have positive 2 third x plus because ne negative negative positive 2 third now the slope for this line is 2 third. Therefore, the slope for L1 is just the negative reciprocal of that or negative 1 over 2 third, which is equivalent to negative 3 halves. So, that's your answer. The line 2x minus 3y plus 2 is equal to 0 is perpendicular to another line L. I think it's already repeated, sorry. The angle between two lines. The angle between intersecting lines is determined by the tangent theta equals to the difference of their slopes over 1 plus the product of the slopes. Okay. Find the acute angle between the lines 9x plus 4y minus 32 plus to 0 and 6x minus 13y plus 15 plus to 0. So, let's determine first their respective slopes. So, 9x plus 4y minus 32 equals to 0. 4y is equals to negative 9x plus 32. Divide both sides by 4. We have y equals to negative 9 over 4. x plus 32 over 4. So, y equals to negative 9 over 4. x plus 8. The slope of the first equation is negative 9 over 4. The next equation, equation is 6x minus 13y plus 15 equals to 0. 
negative 13y equals to negative 6x transpose negative 15 divide both sides by negative 13 okay our equation will be positive because negative negative positive 6x over 13 negative negative positive 15 over 13 thus loop of the second is equals to 6 over 13 so to determine the angle between two lines we have tan theta equals to m2 minus m1 over 1 plus m2 m1 so tangent theta equals to m2 minus m1 plus 1 plus m1 2 tangent theta equals to uh, 6 over 13 or since the angle is just required here uh, we take the arc tangent of these values for us to determine theta okay so theta equals to arc tangent we will now substitute m2 6 over 13 minus m1 uh, negative negative 9 over 4 over 1 plus 6 over 13 times negative 9 over 4 close parenthesis using our calculators we can determine the angle and so so the arc tangent of 6 over 13 minus uh, since this is our both negative we will have plus 9 over 4 1 plus 6 over 13 times 9 over 4 okay At tangent that's 53 right 53.065 degrees or we can express this that also in degrees minutes seconds so that's more correct but let's say here I use 53.065 degrees that's your answer since acute angle is required this is correct because what is required is the angle between the lines that are less than 90 degrees but if it requires the obtuse angle just take the just take the supplement of the determined angle using this formula okay distance between a point and a line the formula for that given the general equation of the line ax plus by plus c equals to zero and the coordinates of the of that given point we will just simply substitute that here in this formula ax1 plus by1 plus c over this positive or negative the square root of uh, a squared plus squared since what is required is the distance from the point or the nearest distance from the point to the line uh, this formula shall be determined by taking the absolute value of that in order for us to have a value of positive value for the distance so that we might not confuse on what sign we will use on the denominator okay so Let's use that formula here in this example. Given the point 5, negative 2, and the equation of the line 7x minus 4y minus 28. Now, uh, let's find first what are the given. The given here are x of 1 for the coordinate for the, for the given point, 
and y sub 1. Next, what are the coefficients here on this equation of the line? We have a for 7, negative 4 for b, and negative 28 for c. Again, I will rewrite the given x of 1, 5, y sub 1, negative 2. A is positive 7, B is negative 4, C is negative 28. The distance from a point to a line is equals to the absolute value of AX1 plus BY1 plus C all over positive or negative the square o of a squared plus b squared now we substitute all of that here uh, 7 times 5 plus negative 4 to be multiplied by negative 2 plus negative 28 all over positive or negative the square root of a squared 7 squared plus b squared negative 4 squared d therefore is equals to let's evaluate the solutions okay so i will just simply use my calculator in evaluating the numerator as well as the denominator for the numerator, we have 7 times 5 plus a negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8 minus 28. That's 15. Over the square root of 7 squared is 49. 4 squared is 16. Okay. Square root of 65. Square root of 65. So, the absolute value of that, so either positive or negative for the denominator, doesn't matter, we'll have a positive value. So, 15 over the answer, square root of 65. 3 the square root of 65 over 13 or in decimal 1.861 distance or the nearest distance from the point to a line is 1.861 units that's your answer next the distance between two parallel lines so given the equations of the lines so usually if uh, two lines are parallel their coefficients for the term with x and the terms of y is just the same what differs are the values for the constants that's why for us to determine the distance between parallel lines we use this formula c1 minus c2 over the square root of a squared plus b squared so we can take also the absolute value for that okay or for us to determine the positive uh, distance example find the distance between the two parallel lines 6x minus 5y plus 13 equals to 0 and 6x minus 5y minus 22 equals to 0. So we'll just write down here on the given a, they are both 6, p, negative 5. But c, for the first equation, it's 13. c, for the second equation, is negative 22. Solution for the distance between parallel lines have absolute value of c1 minus c2 over the square root of a squared plus b squared. Substitute now absolute value of 
negative, ah, sorry, 13 minus negative 22 all over the square root of a squared, 6 squared plus negative 5 squared. This equals to absolute value of 13 plus 22 is 35 all over the square root of uh, 36 this is 36 plus 25 36 plus 25 that is equals to 35 over the square root of uh, 61 okay determine the value for that Uh, absolute value it's right here okay shift and click here for the absolute value symbol 35 over the square root of 61 that's it that's the equivalent value for that but in, in decimal with decimal values we have 4.481 units. Okay. So, that ends the first part of our lecture in analytic geometry. Thank you for watching. God bless you.